All right, so if you're clicking on this video, you are probably wondering how to save more time, how to be more efficient, how to crank out your edits even faster. So come with me into the edit bay and let's look at Final Cut Pro and explore together five plugins that I use every single day when I'm creating content for YouTube. All right, so first up, we're looking at an edit I did for a video about iJustine and her editing workflow. And there's one plugin that I used in this video that I thought made a few key moments a little bit more fun. So there's a couple things I use Add Motion for. One is for a dramatic push-in or a dramatic accent on something that I'm saying. The other thing, of course, is for navigating around my tutorials. This is really great if you have any animations that you want to do on your video to navigate around whatever piece of software you're trying to teach. What's really nice about it is you can really ease into a movement. It doesn't have to be this abrupt thing. It can be ease or expo. It can land a little bit softer. You've got a lot more control than if you were to animate this by hand using keyframes. So let's look at this segment and you can see how I animate it using add motion. Well, move to the left, very similar to this form, move to the left a little bit more, move to the right, the pull back, zoom in. All of those moves are done with add motion. It makes it ridiculously easy to animate you to your tutorials and add to those dramatic moments where you want to have a push in or a pull back on your shot. So add motion, definitely one to get. I've got a link in the description if you want to check it out. So this next plugin is by Motion VFX, and Motion VFX is hands down my favorite plugin maker. There's a couple of reasons for that. I'll get into that in another video, I think. But right now we're gonna focus on their awesome plugin called M Film Mat. Now in the M Film Mat plugin, there are a ton of film effects, mats that you can do, overlays, um, split screen overlays. There's also some film effects where you can blur the frame, you can put in film burns, you can do a color look, add film dirt, grain, uh, letterboxing, sprocket holes, vignettes, all kinds of really cool film film effects, light leaks even. And they also have some different titles that you can use. And the titles and this up here, the zoom in and zoom out, those are the two things in this plugin that I use all the time. Now the zoom in and zoom out adjustment layers, they have those in a number of their plugins. It's sort of one of those little bonus things that they put into a range of plugins that they offer. And I use this one quite often. You can see here about my video all about film school that I'm using zoom in uh, and zoom out effects on these photographs to, to give it kind of a Ken Burns effect. Now the Ken Burns effect is built into Final Cut Pro, but this is even faster to do. All you have to do is drop this on the timeline and then over in the inspector, you can adjust the percentage and whether or not the zoom in is on or off. I usually leave that on and the percentage that I use range from 5% all the way up to 20%. There's a little focal point that you can adjust right here. So if you want it to go to a different part of frame, similar to the Ken Burns effect, but just a little bit easier to use. This is a really quick and easy solution. Now, one negative about it is it's just kind of a linear progression. It doesn't sort of ramp up into it and you can't make those adjustments. But for the specific use cases where I want to just quickly zoom in or zoom out, it works perfectly. And in this video, I wanted to experiment a little bit with zooming in and zooming out or pushing in and pushing out to just add a little bit of something more dynamic to the footage of me speaking to camera. I've got my wide angle and my tight angle and I have those cuts in between, but sometimes if I'm making a point for five, eight, 10 seconds, it's nice for a little dramatic effect to have this zoom out and zoom in. It's a subtle thing, but I think it helps keep the viewer engaged and it just adds a little something extra to the footage, especially because this video is about something that's a little bit more heightened, a little bit more dramatic. So you can see we've got this subtle zoom in and there it starts. In the production track from Best Boy Electric all the way up to above the line cinematography. And then we'll even do a zoom out. Your dolly grip. You understood what they went through and what they had to do to help the cinematographer achieve their vision, to help the director achieve their vision. Now you could do this with add motion, but because it's such a simple effect where we aren't really thinking about the importance of easing it in and easing it out, I just threw on these zoom in and zoom out effects quickly, was able to copy and paste them, lay them down quickly, and really take my edit of this video, I think, to the next level. It's one of those sort of like 1%, 2% increase in qualities that really has an effect on the viewer, and I'm really happy how it turned out. Now, the other component in the M Film Map plugin that I really like are these titles. This one here especially. I used this one in a couple of my edits over the last several weeks to have a little bit of a through line in the branding, if you will, of how I'm transitioning between moments in my videos. So this is the Cinematic 84 title, and you can see what I've done to it. I've changed the color to kind of my standard yellow color adjusted some of the spacing and all that for it. And I'm using these as a way to transition between the different points I'm making. This is the iJustine video I did where I looked at her workflow 
and made some suggestions for how she could maybe increase her efficiency, which is what I'm doing in this video, letting all of you know how these plugins might make you more efficient or give you better tools to use in all of your video editing. So this one I really liked uh, using to separate everything out. I use it again right here for the double blade method. And there's some animations that it has too. And so those animations in and out, I added some sound effects to make it look like a film was changing reels. And I think it's a subtle effect, but it's really nice. There's some flickering, some film grain, stuff like that. Dust, hairs, particles. And I think it's just kind of a cool way to transition between the different points in your video. So those are the two elements of the M Film Matte plugin that I used. Again, from Motion VFX, hands down my favorite plugin maker for Final Cut Pro. I've got a link to that one down in the description, so you'll definitely want to check it out. All right, so this new effect is brand new to my arsenal. It comes from a good friend of the channel, Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. He was struggling with doing picture in picture in a quick and easy way, so he created his own plugin to make it much simpler. So if we look at a recent video on how I was doing the picture in picture effect, you can see it's pretty clunky. I've got a shape here that I had to create in order to put that behind this image of me. And this required putting a shape mask on and getting it all sized down. So I'd have to repeat this for every single time I needed a picture in picture. I'd have to have this shot of me with a shape mask applied and then this shape behind it with also with a drop shadow on it so that it would have uh, the picture in picture effect. Well, Dylan took all of that and combined it together into a single effect. So now all I have to do is have my clip here and I can add Dylan's effect to it and it's called picture in picture and it takes care of it completely. I'll show you real quick how it works. I'm gonna switch this to my screen recording and then we'll come here. We'll add the picture in picture effect. So this is what it looks like when you first apply it. I can change this to my standard yellow color and then we can turn off the animation out and animation in because I'm just gonna leave it as a, something that just kind of pops on. And then we've got a few controls here. Let's see, um, scale. So we can resize it, get it down to where we want it. And let's make it a little smaller, something like that. And then if I want to adjust the scale of the video inside, I can. And then I can also adjust its position so I can frame myself up exactly how I want. And then he also has the drop shadow effect put in. So I'm going to go ahead and make the opacity full, bring the blur. Let's adjust the distance a little bit. There we go. It's a little dark because of that. It's just a subtle effect on there. And there you have it. That's how quickly you can do picture in picture. It's so much faster than the old way. I cannot tell you how much time this plugin has saved. Dylan has access to that through his Patreon. I'll put a link down in the description. So if you want to check it out and save a ton of time for your tutorial videos or anything that you're doing with picture in picture, you'll definitely want to check out Dylan's plugin. So the next plugin I want to talk about is Film Convert Nitrate. Film Convert has an excellent plugin that does film emulation, where it emulates motion picture film from Kodak and Fuji, as well as still photography film from Kodak and Fuji, and a few others as well. What I really love about Film Convert Nitrate is how easy it is to use. So right here I have some Canon Log 3 footage from my C300 Mark II, and I want to quickly add the film emulation effect for a motion picture Kodak film stock using Film Convert Nitrate. So all we have to do is search for Nitrate in the effect browser and then we'll double click to add it. We'll go up to the inspector and open the controls and then we'll plug in Canon, the camera which is the C300 Mark II and then we'll plug in what our camera settings were which was Cinema Gamut Canon Log 3. And pretty much right off the bat you have a really solid workable image. What it's doing is it's doing the conversion to Rec. 709 but then it's also adding the film emulation on top of it. There's a few things to dial in here. It looks like I'm a little hot on the highlights. So I'd look at the waveform here and using the film convert nitrate maybe bring the exposure down a touch and then bring the highlights down a little bit just to get my skin tones right at that 68 IRE, which looks really nice. Now from here, you could do some adjustments if you wanna do a teal and orange look. You can do all that within the Film Convert Nitrate plugin. Something that I do for my YouTube videos specifically is I actually take the grain down. I have found that whatever YouTube is doing to compress my already compressed export of my video, the grain can sometimes create some blocking and artifacting. I don't think this is really an issue with Film Convert. It's more of an issue with a compressed video that I'm sending out going up to YouTube and then getting compressed again. But you can see right off the bat, 
you know, we probably still have some tweaking to do, adjust the highlights a little bit, maybe just, you know, blew up the shadows a little bit and add a little bit more warmth. But for the most part, like this is good to go. And that's what I love about Film Convert Nitrate. You don't have to do a ton of work to try to get everything converted from log to rec 709 and then making a lot of adjustments. Even if you had your white balance, exposure, everything dialed in, you're not making a ton of little adjustments to get the colors just right. It really does a good job of dialing in the skin tones and the overall look of the image. And I'm really happy with it. One more thing I wanna say about Film Convert Nitrate. When you download the plugin, you do need to go to the website and download the camera packs for your specific camera. Every camera model has its own download file that you need to have installed in order to tell Film Convert Nitrate what your camera settings are. So you wanna make sure you download that in addition to the Film Convert Nitrate plugin. If you're interested in experiencing more about film emulation, I'll have a link down in the description and you can check it out. So the last plugin that I'm using on a daily basis and it's saving me a ton of time is another one by Motion VFX and it's called M Tutorial. No surprise there, I make a lot of tutorial content and these M Tutorial plugins and effects are really great for making your tutorial content look a ton better. Let's go through my edit about MKBHD's Final Cut Pro workflow and I'll show you all the elements from M Tutorial that I used in the video. So we've got an arrow here, just a simple animated arrow, something that you could create using the shapes generator in Final Cut Pro and then animating the keyframes, but that's gonna take a lot of time. The arrows is really great because you have a couple of options for the different types of arrows that you wanna choose. There's four options for that. You can choose to have it animate in or off, and then of course you can adjust the color, drop shadow, all of that stuff. So some really great controls for this. And when I play it back, just a simple arrow. He's got a gap clip in the primary storyline and he's basically... And then because I have a hard cut, I didn't bother to animate it out, even though you could do that if you wanted to. All right, so another really awesome effect that I use is one called magnification. This allows you to magnify the portion of frame that you really want the audience to see. If you're not gonna zoom in on it, but you wanna keep the context of your timeline or whatever is you're showing, but show just a little portion of it zoomed in. I use that here to show how I can change clip connections in Final Cut Pro. And this has a ton of controls for it. You can add a frame around it. You can change the shape of it. You can change how magnified it is. And of course you can move it around wherever you need to move it around. This is one that I use all the time. I love it. Uh, magnification for your tutorials really is gonna take your tutorials to the next level. You can see I use the magnification here again. So here's what it looks like, the magnification. Click and you're gonna see that connection point move here. You can't do it here. And it's gonna animate out. And then I use it again here. And then the third element of M Tutorial that I love and use all the time is you can draw a sort of like highlighted box around certain things to draw the viewer's attention to it. So keep your eye up here on these clips as uh, this animation draws on. You can see the cursor come down and it draws a perfect yellow box around those items to draw attention. I love that effect and it works really well in highlighting different areas of the frame when you're making a tutorial video. Let's take a look real quick at how much more there is in the M tutorial. There are tons of effects in here, including ones where you can highlight elements on a page, you can do text animations, different buttons, blurred frame effects, drop zones. It's really a jam-packed plugin that I highly recommend taking a look at. So those three elements of M Tutorial, the animated arrow, the arrow frame box, and the magnification, those are must-haves for my tutorial workflow. And I'm grateful that Motion VFX has plugins like this that help creators like me make really awesome tutorial videos. If you wanna check that plugin out, of course, it's down in the description. Some of the plugins down below do have promo codes so you can get a percentage off of your purchase. So definitely check the promo codes and the links in the description so that you can pick up some of these plugins and be more efficient, faster, and quicker with turning out your videos. So those are five plugins that I use on a daily basis. Let me know down in the comments if any of them are already in your arsenal, or let me know if one of these plugins is one that you know for sure is going to save you a ton of time in your post-production workflow. That's all I've got for our time in the Edit Bay today, kids. Until the next video, I'll see y'all soon, and don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.